This market is filled with so many games, it's hard to keep track. I'm not even talking about the big AAA releases. Just take a look at Steam's recently released page. At any given time, there's a dozen or so brand new indie games. So this new video series is dedicated to games that I found dope that don't seem to be on anyone's radar. Today we start with this indie game from 2013, Race the Sun. Race the Sun is an endless runner developed by Flipfly. It originally launched on PC and was later ported to the PS3, PS4, Vita, and Wii U. In Race the Sun, the player controls a ship that's constantly moving forward and moves laterally to avoid crashing into obstacles. As the title suggests, the sun is constantly moving down towards the horizon. What first drew me into Race the Sun was its quick pick up and play attitude. My sessions would range from 5 to 10 minutes to multiple hours at a time attempting to complete challenges. With its simple control scheme and minimalist presentation, it doesn't take long to get right back in between long gaps of play periods. The game's levels are randomly generated, but once it's generated, it can be played for a full 24 hours before it resets. Not only does this encourage checking back in, it lets the player really hone their skills for that particular set of levels. The most important part of this system is how it always provides a fresh experience for the player. If one isn't particularly happy with the current level, just simply wait a day for a new one. The level rotation also prevents you from mastering a level and getting ridiculously high scores. If you own the PC version, you can download community levels or create your own. Unfortunately, these require an internet connection to enjoy, which inherently gives these features a vague shelf life. It wasn't the game's simple pick up and play attitude that intrigued me, the unlock system is fascinating as well. At any given time, the player is tasked with completing three challenges that gives XP in order to level up. Each level generally unlocks something new. The challenges themselves are what's great though. The first challenge in the list is generally pretty easy and doesn't offer much reward. Most of the time, these challenges are completed by just playing the game. The added benefit of this is pretty much anyone can unlock everything the game has to offer. Don't get me wrong, I don't think games should reward bad play, but this gives the opportunity for the physically disabled and less skilled players to complete the game. The other two challenges are dedicated to making the player play in a unique way. These challenges offer much greater reward. They can range from only moving left through a region or double jumping a specific amount of times. Completing these changes it up just enough to keep the main challenge from not getting too tedious. Upon starting the game for the first time, Race the Sun limits the mechanics. You can pretty much only move left and right. As you level up, you slowly unlock abilities, perks, and new mechanics. In the first few levels or so, the leveling system acts as a tutorial for the more complicated mechanics with brief prompts that explain them. The brevity of the prompts not only allow new players to get right back into the action, they also let experienced players quickly skip them. My only problem with the perks themselves is that some of them are objectively better than other ones. While I can't say for certain, but the simplistic visual style made up of mostly rudimentary polygons lends to the fact that the graphics will still hold up in the future. My favorite aspect of the visual style is the sun. It's right there in the frickin' title, it better be good. The sun represents a de facto timer. During each run, the sun constantly lowers. The player can collect energy to add more time. What I really dig about the sun is how it fits into the game. Not only does the sun play into the title, its use as a timer is quite brilliant. Even though it's a pretty simple design choice, I really have to commend how well thought out it is. At the start of a new run, the sun is placed directly in the center as the time goes down. It eventually lowers to the horizon. If the player collects energy, the sun will quickly rise. With additional lighting changes, the sun's position intuitively informs the player on how much time is left. The player is only deliberately alerted to the sun's position when it's most important, when they're about to run out of time. As time dwindles down, the way you maneuver through the level drastically changes. The ship in Race the Sun is solar powered, and just like the real sun, it inherently casts shadows. Driving through these shadows will slow the ship down. As your time decreases, the sun casts bigger shadows. This little mechanic gives that extra little push for you to incentivize maximizing the player's time through pickups. I could go into more detail, but I really think you should experience this game for itself. At the end of the day, Race the Sun is a small, tightly crafted game. Despite being relatively simple, Race the Sun is a game that has smart design with just enough depth to make for a really fun experience. It's on PC, pretty much any PlayStation console that connects to the internet, Wii U, and on iOS. Given the cheap price tag, I can't recommend this game enough.